Welcome, friends. It is wonderful to meet with you today. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. As we approach a holy God today, we see our own sin in stark relief to that. And so let us confess our sins together today. God Almighty, we confess that we have sinned in your sight. Despite our best efforts and intentions, we have failed to consistently live in ways that bring honor to your name. So forgive us, we pray. Through the grace of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, set us free from the grip of sin, from attitudes and actions that do not lead to life. We pray through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, once we were slaves to sin, living lives that only led to death. But thanks be to God. In his mercy, mercy, he has set us free from the power of sin and death and has given us forgiveness and eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now we are free to choose life and to use our lives to honor and praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Well, I'm going to read for you uh, today from the book of Romans, chapter 6, and verses 12 to 23. Hear the word of the Lord. Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master, because you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves. Just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer them in slavery to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things that you are now ashamed of. These things re result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe that we all carry an invisible backpack. Sometimes that backpack is light. Sometimes it is heavy. At other times, the backpack becomes a crushing load. And we are unable to carry it because... We kept adding things to it and didn't take the time to unload anything. Every day, many people lug such an invisible backpack around everywhere they go. 
And over time, that backpack begins to smell because of things like unacknowledged grief, unawareness of our emotions, and just the pileup of life's difficulties. And all of that becomes like a pair of stinky gym socks that get tossed in the backpack with hard feeling after hard feeling caked up on top of it. Then something unfortunate begins to happen. The backpack becomes our master. It begins to influence us the, uh, and the way that we talk, what we do, what we don't do. It becomes this heavy and even crushing load because rather than Christ, the Spirit, and the Scriptures informing and influencing what we say and what we do, the invisible backpack calls the shots. And this backpack is the weight of sin. The dominant word for sin throughout the New Testament means to miss the mark or to fall short. It is not a word meaning some terrible, egregious wrong committed against another. Rather, it is the most common form of sin that there is. Simply failing to deal with what humanity needs to deal with. It's, it's mostly just avoiding things. And so, out of sight, out of mind. And unfortunately, those items that get put in the invisible backpack uh, are not outside of the hearts of you. The Apostle Paul's way of framing this situation is this. He says, do not offer the parts of your body, your lives, to wickedness, but offer ourselves to God. When we have become so accustomed to the invisible backpack as our master that we cannot imagine life without carrying it around, we really need to take it off. And we need to carefully unpack each item we have stuffed into it and allow ourselves to face the pain and the hurt and take up Christ's easy backpack, his easy yoke. Since we are redeemed people, baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, we no longer need or ought to carry a load of sin any longer. We were meant to have a master and to carry a backpack, just not the backpack of shortcomings and failures. Instead, we are to throw over our shoulders the backpack of mercy and righteousness and follow the master, Jesus Christ. So the question becomes for us all, who is your master? And that's a question that's not meant to be a scolding question. It's an encouraging question. It is an invitation for us to unburden ourselves. Jesus Christ, by his grace, took the backpack of sin that you and I were carrying and took it upon himself. He took that crushing weight of our backpacks, that crushing load of sin for us. Jesus took out those stinky gym socks. They were then nailed with him to the cross. We no longer need to carry this smelly load of sin any longer because Jesus already carried it for us and took care of it. Yet so many of us still insist on taking up the invisible backpack and we keep putting stuff back into it. So we really need to deliberately and intentionally take off that invisible backpack. And since it's invisible, most of us would never guess that another carries such a heavy load. Instead, what we do see is the backpack calling the shots, causing another to work himself into the ground to 
continue ignoring the hurts and the pain to keep everything clean and neat and in control on the outside because on the inside there is emotional chaos. You and I know that what appears on the outside may not be true on the inside. For example, if you were to see my grands, my 10-year-old grandson, you would never know that on the outside that his brain is having intense and immense struggles on the inside with epilepsy and seizures. And when we look at each other in the church and in the world, we just can't assume that just because everything may seem okay on the outside, that the inside is just fine. Our strongholds of secrecy and invisibility need to be broken and pulled down in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, Jesus took on your backpack for you. You need no longer carry it. Take it off. Unpack it. Let the healing of Christ's cross bring you freedom from your weight. It is time to put off the backpack of sin and to put on Christ's righteousness. It is time to say with some flavor, I will not carry you any longer, old master, because I belong to God. Often our struggle is with some opposing forces that operate within us. Righteousness opposed to sin, freedom opposed to slavery, and a gift opposed to wages. And the main point of all of that is one of mastery. Who is your master? The hard work that we must do is the ongoing work of confession and offering our lives to God. And so that we can say things like, I will not carry a load of ignored items any longer because I belong to God. I will not carry an unresolved load of pain any longer so that I continue using my tongue to gossip and slander and backbite because my tongue is not my own. My tongue belongs to God. I will not be burdened by the clock and let it control my life because my time is not my own. My time belongs to God, and I will steward that time wisely. I will not carry the troubles of my job with me by working myself into the ground, because my job belongs to God, and my master calls me to a Sabbath rest. I will unload this backpack of pain and deal with it so that I don't keep compulsively spending my money because my money belongs to God. The invisible backpack no longer has any power over me because I have unloaded it, grieved my hurts and losses, and have moved to taking on Christ's backpack. I belong to Jesus Christ. Show me a miserable Christian, and I will show you a Christian who is carrying the crushing weight of an invisible backpack, which informs and influences every decision and each action. So take up today Christ's backpack of grace without trying to serve two masters, law and grace. There is always this temptation to try and make deals with God, to unload some of the backpack, but not all of it. We might also have a kind of spiritual Stockholm Syndrome, which has affinity with the old master, even when it was abusive. Holy Scripture never advocates an attitude adjustment or behavior modification when it comes to sin. It talks of doing away with the backpack completely because Christ has already taken care of it. Watchman Nee was a 20th century Chinese Christian leader and a contemporary of Chairman Mao in China. 
In exhorting his fellow Chinese to live for Christ, he said this, The trouble with many Christians today is that they have an insufficient idea of what God is asking of them. How glibly they say, Lord, I am willing to do anything for you. Do you know that God is asking of you your very life? There are cherished ideals, strong wills, precious relationships, much loved work that will have to go. So do not give yourself to God unless you mean it. God will take you seriously, even if you do not mean it seriously. We are meant to deal with the pain and the hurts we have accumulated but have not lamented over. There is no spiritual growth and development apart from doing this. We cannot have Christ as our master until we get rid of all competing masters first. In fact, what has the backpack ever really done for you? What benefit do you receive from lugging it around everywhere? The wages of continually carrying the unconfessed load on our backs will eventually catch up to us. But the gift of God is freedom from sin and a life under the new management of Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we praise and honor you as our Lord and Savior. You are in control of all things. We thank you that you are always with us and will never leave us nor forsake us. You are the only all-powerful and only wise God. You are kind and loving in all your ways. We love you, and we thank you that we are united with Christ and spiritually alive in him. We choose not to love the invisible sins in our lives, but to crucify the sinful nature and not be its master. So thank you for the life we have in Christ. I ask you to fill us with the Holy Spirit so that we can be guided by you and not carry out the desires of the sinful nature. We declare our total dependence on you. We refuse to be discouraged. You are the God of all hope. Nothing is too difficult for you, Lord. I am confident that you will supply all of our needs as we seek to live according to your word. I thank you that we can be content and that we can live a responsible life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for being with me today. I look forward to doing this again. And as we depart today, we go with the blessing of God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship and the encouragement of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my friends.